Okay, I'm gonna smell it. Oh! Hey guys, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video because it's something that I've always wanted to make but I've never done before. Today, we are gonna be doing some cookie science. So in front of me, I have 12 different kinds of flowers, one of which is regular flour, and the rest are different types of flour and they're all gluten-free. Today, we're gonna see which is the best replacement flour when you're making cookies. The control is going to be my classic chocolate chip cookie recipe. And we're going to replace just the flour and we're gonna see how each of the flours react in the recipe. I'm gonna keep all of the measurements the same. I just want to see in general are there any flours out there that you could maybe one-to-one -one replace flour. All right I'm overdressed as always and ready to bake. Let's get started. We're gonna start with our control recipe and because we're making 12 cookies today I cut the recipe in half. In a medium-sized bowl you're gonna combine your flour salt, and baking soda. Whisk together till well combined. We're gonna cream together butter, and it's soft. Remember, you want it at room temperature and our brown sugar, white granulated sugar. Then using an electric mixer, I'm gonna mix together for a few minutes on a medium speed until it becomes light and fluffy. Oh, look at that, nice and creamy. Now we're gonna add one egg and a little bit of vanilla extract. Mix together one more time until well combined and then we'll add our dry ingredients. And mix together until well incorporated. Cookie dough is looking good. Now we're gonna fold in our chocolate chips. Then you can use a spatula or a wooden spoon. I'm gonna use a wooden spoon because I have actually broke a spatula before folding it into a nice thick dough. So I'm gonna be doing this. Oh yeah. Oh, this is looking good, you guys. Look at that. Oh, it looks like cookie dough ice cream. <laughs> and it smells like it too. Our dough is ready, and now we're gonna scoop it onto a baking sheet lined with a piece of parchment paper. The measurement I'm using is two tablespoons. This little ice cream scoop is a perfect two tablespoons, but if you don't have this at home, you can just use two tablespoon scoops. I'm only gonna be scooping six cookies onto the baking sheet because I don't know if they're gonna spread or hold together. All right, our first batch of cookies are ready to bake. You're gonna heat your oven to 375 and bake for about eight to 10 minutes until they turn a light golden brown. All right, the cookies have baked. I gave them plenty of time to cool. This is what they look like, and I'm gonna give them a taste test. I mean, I'm very familiar with this recipe, you guys. Yep. Mmm. Crunchy on the outside. It's got a little crunch, but then when you get in there, nice and soft. Mm-mm-mm. All right, this recipe is tried and true. It is our control recipe. Now it's time for the science. Let's test all these other flowers and see what happens. For our first flower experiment, we're gonna be testing tapioca. I saw this at the store and I thought it was fascinating and I thought, hmm, what is this gonna do in a cookie? So over here in the large bowl, I've already creamed together the butter and the sugars, it's ready to go. And I have here the tapioca flour with a little bit of that salt and baking soda. So I'm just gonna combine all of the dry in with our wet. It's much more fine, almost like powdered sugar. It's a little silkier, smoother, really sticks together. Let's mix it up. This is a much softer dough than that original, so I have no idea what's gonna happen. All right, let's fold in our chocolate chips. Oh, so sticky, okay. The stickiest. Just like before, I'm gonna scoop six cookies onto the baking sheet. All right, we've got the cookies on the sheet and we're gonna be using the same baking directions, same temperature, same time as our control cookie. Whoa, look how they baked. These were really interesting because in the oven, they rised up, they got poofy, but as soon as I took them out, they went totally flat like a pancake and they're totally crispy around the edges and then they're still a little gooey and unbaked in the middle. I'm gonna taste this cookie and at the end of the video, I'm going to rank them. So we'll rank them in order, best to worst. Here goes nothing. Oh, weird. Well, it's crunchy on the outside, very crunchy on the outside, and very, very gooey on the inside. It's hard to mess up a chocolate chip cookie, but this one is weird. Taste-wise, not too far off from the original, but I do have a little bit of lingering, almost like starchiness in my mouth, and the texture is really throwing me off. I haven't tried the other cookies yet, but I'm not sure this would rank very high. We'll see. On to the next cookie. Next up, we're using rice flour, which has been a really good substitute for me 
me for other things. I've just never tried it in a cookie recipe. So let's give it a go. That slid right out much easier. All right, let's mix this together. The rice flour so far is super similar to our original. Like the texture of this dough looks and feels very similar. Let's fold in these chips and see how it goes. Oh, this is nice. Okay. Ooh, things are looking good. Oh, I've got my hopes up. I know I shouldn't do that, especially when you're testing things, but I've got my hopes up. All right, let's scoop this onto a sheet. The dough is nowhere near as sticky, but I just got some on my fingers and it's feeling a little bit gritty. Oh no. Let's pop these in the oven and see what happens. Here's our cookies and I'm so excited because they didn't spread too much. They've got great height. They look amazing. Got nice golden brown around the edges. Mmm. Look at that. Now taste wise, these taste great. I really, really love it. Texture wise, there's no chewiness that I personally love in the middle of the cookie. It's baked all the way through. It's a little gritty, but I'll make my final judgment call at the end when we rank them, but all in all, not a bad replacement flour. I'm pretty impressed by this one. Okay, rice flour, on to the next cookie. Next flour, potato flour. I'm super excited about this one because I love potatoes, but I've never baked with potato flour. This is a thing. All right, we're gonna add all of our potato flour. It's finer, but it's not as silky as the tapioca. Now we're gonna mix together. Oh my gosh, everyone, this just in. The dough is turning gray. Well, this is a little weird. The dough turned a light gray color and the dough's thicker than the normal dough. It's also a little drier. Kind of smelling like an old potato. Fold in these little chocolate chips and hope for the best. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you're gonna need a wooden spoon. This is really hefty here. Time for the scoopy scoops. It's really easy to scoop. All right, it's a very thick dough. Smells a little potato-y. Let's see what happens. Whoa, what are these? Our potato flour cookies have baked and <laughs> they spread slightly. When I say slight, I mean slight because they look almost like we just scooped them. I mean, they, they look like little potatoes. Okay, let's try one. They smell like a cookie. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, they're very dry. I'm so sad because not only are they a little bit dry, but I kind of feel like the potato flour is covering a lot of the cookie flavors. And the aftertaste's a little gritty. This flour would take some tweaking with this recipe. This is shocking. I would have never thought a potato flour would do this. I need some water. Oh my goodness. Next replacement flour we're gonna try is buckwheat. Now, it's called buckwheat, but there's no wheat in it. It's actually made from seeds of the buckwheat plant. So it's a seed flour. We're just gonna add it to our butter mixture and see what it does. Let's keep hope alive, all right, everybody? Let's mix it up, see what happens. So the dough itself is really thick. I think this is the thickest dough that we've made so far, and it has a very unique smell. I can't even describe it because I don't know how to. I keep smelling the dough, trying to find the word. Woody, I don't know what kind of wood, maybe cedar. So weird. Let's pour in these chocolate chips, fold it together, and just keep our fingers crossed. Whoa! Okay, that's gonna take some muscle. Let's scoop some cookies. All right, here we go. This is like no chocolate chip cookie I've ever seen, but Let's see what happens. Oh my goodness, you guys, I was wrong. These are not like the potato cookie. They spread while they baked. They're actually very similar shape and size to my original chocolate chip cookie. The color stayed the same as the batter color, this very dark gray. The chocolate chips look like you fake frosted them, kind of like you do with Christmas trees. I'm smelling the bottom of the cookie and it smells like cedar wood. Hey, we've created bark cookies. Maybe deers will like these, I don't know. <laughs> okay, here goes nothing. When you bite into this cookie, it dupes you. It's got that light crunchiness all the way around that I love with a chocolate chip cookie, and the middle is nice and soft, and I'm like, Okay, this is gonna be great. And then the longer it just sits in your mouth, it just kind of all goes away and it gets really gritty. The thing that shocked me is they held the shape really well and I love the textures initially. I wonder if there's probably some things I can do to kind of reduce the amount of grittiness, probably change it up just a little bit. Woohoo! Next 
We're gonna try almond flour. I love almond flour. I make French macarons with them all the time, but I've never tried to use the flour in a different cookie recipe. I'm very excited to see how this is going to go. Little sticky. That's okay, it likes to do that. It mixed pretty well, this is nice. But the dough in general is just a little bit softer than the regular flour dough. Let's add the chocolate! Oh yeah, that's a little softer, that's nice. My arm is getting quite the workout today. Oh, but this folds really nicely. And even cookie dough color-wise, very similar to the original cookie. Oh, I love that, comes out nice and clean. I'm getting so excited because it's a softer dough, but it's not too soft. I cannot wait, let's see what happens. Oh no, you guys, they were baking so well. They were poofing up in the oven and then they just <laughs> collapsed. <laughs> so we've got flat, flattity, flat, flat cookies. Look at these, they're pancake cookies. The edges are a little crispy and then the center is bendy and soft. So I actually don't mind that as a texture. It's just super thin, but let's give it a taste. Flavors are good, just a little bit more nutty, but it's not a bad addition. The almond flour is really subtle. I think it pairs well with all the other flavors, but what's really hitting my palate and my tongue is I think some caramelization happened, especially here on the bottom. The aftertaste in my mouth is almost like a burnt caramel. So the cookies are just too thin for me and they have a heavy caramelized aftertaste. I'd still eat them, not gonna lie. Next flour I'm gonna be trying is cauliflower flour. I've never baked with this in a cookie or anything, but a lot of my friends have had pizza dough, like pizza crust made out of cauliflower flour. So I'm really interested to see what's gonna go. go. Oh, it's got a smell to it. Whoa, kinda almost Cheesy, garlicky, fish foodie. Okay, let's add this to the butter mixture. Oh, wow, it's very fine. We're gonna mix this on a low speed. Look at this, it looks like there's dry ice in this bowl. So the dough turned to be this orangey color. It's got some good texture here. But the smell, oh my goodness. Oh, it's a very musty smell coming out of this bowl. I'm hoping some of that smell and flavor bakes out in the oven. Let's just cover it in chocolate. Now, sometimes sweet and savory are flavor friends. They go really well together. So I'm really gonna be open-minded here and give this a shot. Oh, I'm not tempted to eat the batter at all. Looks like cookie dough. Doesn't smell like cookie dough. Okay, let's get these cookies on the plate. Woo, you can smell the dough just from feet away. There's a lot going on here. All right, fingers crossed everyone. Let's hope the, the smell and the taste bake out. Here we go. My kitchen smells so weird. These have baked, I gave them some time to cool. The baking of these cookies in general was really inconsistent. Like this cookie is very tall. This one has these dips and lumps. They're all very different. I don't even wanna smell, okay, I'm gonna smell it. Oh, I used to own fish when I was little and it kind of smells like fish food. <laughs> Smell, gross. Taste, gross. Just not even palatable. The one positive thing I can say about them, they're not gritty. They're all chewy. These are disgusting. On the ranking scale, this is the worst. The smell has wafted into the living room, Mike. It smells so bad. I need to light a candle. I got a Christmas candle around here somewhere. Oh, I'm so excited about this flower because you guys, it's coconut flour, and if you know me, you know I love coconuts. I like coconut milk, I like coconut water. I even named my dog coconut. I love coconut, so I'm so excited to work with coconut flour, but I will say that the one thing I do know about coconut flour is very absorbent, like it's very dry. Usually when I would bake with coconut flour, I would reduce the amount, maybe even by half or more, but for science sakes, we're doing one to one, so it's the same measurement as everybody's. Ooh, this is gonna be interesting. This is a very thick dough. I think it's gonna be dry. Oh, the smell. It's like of a chocolate chip cookie and a macaroon had a baby. Mmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, folding these in is not an easy feat. I really use those muscles. 
even flaking off just a little bit. Oh, that's not a good sign. At this point, I don't know what to expect, but all I know is that I love chocolate chip cookies and I love coconut, and they're two things that I love, and I want them to be best friends in the world. So that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> this is the driest cookie we have baked. These did not move in the oven. They didn't spread at all. It looks just like when I scooped it. You can see all the details, every single crease line of the dough. They're very hard. <laughs> they smell so good, you guys. They smell delicious. Oh, they're making my mouth water. This is great. Oh. <laughs> so dry. I already said this from the beginning, but I think I would use half or a fourth of coconut flour because it's so absorbent. So for a one-to-one -one cookie ratio, this is a failure, but with some tweaking, I think we could get it there. Next up, quinoa flour. Maybe it's a seed thing when it's ground up. It just has a little bit of um, woody bitterness, but it's very slight. All right, let's add this to our mixture. The dough itself, very similar to the original dough. Not only the color, but the texture and thickness. When it's mixed together, it smells a little bit more nutty. It's really good. Yes! And fold together. What the heck? Hello, quinoa flour. All right, let's scoop some cookies, see what happens. Cookies are ready to bake. There's a first time for everything. I've never baked with quinoa flours. All right, cookies, cookies, come get your quinoa cookies. They baked really well, very similar, and they just look delicious. They still smell a little nutty, a little woody, but not as strong. It's really mild. Mmm, whoa. Lightly crunchy on the outside, soft in the middle, even just a little bit gooey. I get sweet, I get salty, and this very unique taste that I don't know how to describe other than a little bit nutty and a little bit woody. And the downside, a little grainy, just a little, but very slight. This is surprising because you can bake cookies with quinoa flour. The unique taste is not overpowering, but it does hang out on my palate. Like it lingers on my tongue and in my mouth. It's not a bad thing. It's not quite a good thing. It's just kind of very different. All in all, I think this one is a win. Mm. Mm. Look who's next up. It's banana flour. I've never baked anything with banana flour, but I love bananas. That made a wonderful dough. It's a little bit softer, but pretty good. Folds in really well because the dough's a little softer. Oh, nice. Time to bake these banana cookies. Come on, little bananas. Bananas even rhyme with Rosanna. Rosanna banana cookies, here they are. This could be a new cookie, you guys. This could be the Rosanna banana cookie. Wow, they baked pretty well. They're pretty uniform. I really like that. Let's give them a taste. Mmm. Crispy edges, soft in the middle, a little chewy, no grittiness. Oh, wait a minute, oh wow. Texture-wise, perfect cookie. These baked really well. Just a little lingering of a green banana versus a ripe banana. Dang it! So it's very different than banana bread because banana bread, those are ripe bananas. Even bananas that are kind of past their prime a little bit and they bake really well. This green banana flour is, um, you just taste it a little bit at the end. Oh, dang it! Woo! It's been a long day of baking, but we've got two more flours to go. Next up, chickpea flour. Our only flour today made from a legume. All right, let's see. Ooh, looks so pretty. Da, da, da. Wow, that feels great. I got my fingers in here a little bit and the dough feels a little bit gritty. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Chickpea chocolate chip cookies. Do, 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 do. So far, these are scooping pretty good. I've given up trying to predict what these are gonna do in the oven because I have no stinking idea, you guys. Look at this. They're a little bit more orange, yellow than our original cookies, but they baked pretty well. They smell good. That's a win. Let's take a bite. Mmm, a little crispiness around the outside, soft in the middle, but no chewy. It's just soft in that middle, a little dry, but not as dry as the coconut cookies. The flavor is a little chickpea, a little nutty, but it's really good. I think my only gripe about it is the grittiness, but everything else is great. Last but not least, we've got oat flour. Let's give it a try. We'll mix it up, see what kind of dough it makes. Ooh, pretty. So far, so good. Oh, nice and soft. 
The dough is a little bit softer than the original. I've never used oat flour, but I've made oatmeal cookies before and I love them. They're so good. Final bake of the day. Let's hope we finish strong. Into the oven we go. Okay, we're looking like we've got some good news. Hot, fresh out of the oven. These cookies are gorgeous. So they did spread a little bit in the oven and when they were cooling, they collapsed. But I still think that they're beautiful. They've got golden brown around the sides and it gives it that little crunchiness that I love when I bite into it. It. Oh, they smell so good. We might have a winner. Yes! Yes, these are incredible. Light crunchiness on the outside, soft in the middle, amazing taste. It only took 11 tries with flour, but I think we have found the winner. Oat flour, one-to-one -one replacement. We didn't change anything else. It does taste just a hint like oatmeal, but it's like if an oatmeal cookie and a chocolate chip cookie had a baby. Oat flour makes a great cookie. Congratulations, oat flour. You're the bee's knees. I think I have a new favorite flour in my kitchen for making cookies. This is incredible, but now I'm gonna bring out the rest of the cookies and we're gonna rank them best to worst. We'll see how the cookie crumbles. After much deliberation, we have ranked the cookies from best to worst. So of course, in number one, we have our classic chocolate chip cookie made with regular flour. It's our control cookie. It is delicious. Number two, best replacement flour that we used today was oat flour. Woo, 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 you did so good. This was, in my opinion, the best of the replacement flours, and this is a one-to-one -one replacement. The next best, second runner up, was rice flour. Baked really well, great texture. The only thing that wasn't as good as the oat was the grittiness. Then we have the chickpea flour, almond flour. There was a lot of great things going on for it and it still tasted amazing. And there's a lot of people out there that actually really love these thin, crispy chocolate chip cookies. Sixth place over here, we've got the quinoa flour and right after the coconut flour. I love the taste of this cookie, but it was just way too dry. Now down here, eat at your own risk. Ew. We have the banana cookie, the dupe. The longer you choose, the worse it got. And the tapioca flour. It was just too thin, too crispy. I don't know what I was expecting, but this thing was just not right. Oh, this breaks my heart. Potato flour cookie. I love potatoes. I was really rooting for you, potato. But even the potato was spread a little bit more than our coconut. It just wasn't as sweet. It really tasted like a weird old potato. Here in the bottom, ew, 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 ew. The buckwheat cookie smells and tastes like wood. Last and definitely least was the cauliflower cookie. It smells disgusting. It tastes disgusting. It's super chewy. Ew! I can even smell it from here. Here, Mike, got you something. I don't want it. It doesn't even get to be in the lineup. <laughs> All right, you guys, that does it for the video. I really hope you enjoyed watching me recipe test, doing a little bit of baking science with replacement flowers. This is really fun for me. I have not experimented with this many different types of flowers before, and I think I'm learning a lot. Let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see me try any other ingredient replacements, like dairy replacements replacements or butter replacements or egg replacements, let me know. Also, if you like this video, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, it's free, and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. Now, I want to know from you guys which one of these cookies, and not including the control cookie, not the regular one, would you try? All right, thanks again for watching. If you want to watch any other videos, you can click up here or appear.